to the presentation of operations research as a branch of applied math. Um, and we're going to be doing a case study for optimizing the function of a small farm, small business. So, <laughs> the Plowman family farm in southwest Kansas has been a successful business for several generations. The Plowmans enjoy their self-sufficient lifestyle and their heritage, but in the 21st century it's getting increasingly more difficult to compete with large agricultural corporations. The Plowmans have recently had a budget surplus and are debating the best way to spend their money. Let's listen in. Well, hot dog, Eunice. <laughs> the figures, we got a cool 20 grand to put toward this year's budget. What you think we should spend it on? Now, hold your horses, John. We need to get our hands in a row before we start spending money all willy nilly. We're going to have to. We're we're going to have forty thousand worth of expenses, and we should start thinking about saving money for the chitlins. You know, I mean, Phyllis, Carl, and Frank ain't going to stay young forever. Well, if we spend money, we can make money, Eunice. All I'm um, saying is we need a good plan. Let's start from chicken scratch and figure this thing out. We got two grown seasons and two harvest seasons. Different crops need different amounts of attention depending on the time of year. So what we gonna grow? Well, I was thinking uh, corn, wheat, and soybeans again worked well last year. Hmm. The way I figure it, in the winter and spring, we need to give each acre of soybeans an hour of tender, loving care. Corn needs nine-tenths of an hour per acre, and wheat needs just six-tenths of an hour per acre. Yeah, and in the summer and the fall, when we're doing most of the work, I'll be out there for 1.4 hours in the soybean field. I'll be out there for 1.2 hours with corn and seven-tenths of an hour for the wheat. I'm glad that as a small child, I've developed an erotic tradition of right time in every activity I set out to do. I've seen times like this. <laughs> if we play our cards right, we can balance our time, energy, and the profits. An acre of soil will get us $70 on account of the demand for ethanol. Corn will get us $60 an acre, and wheat will net us $40 an acre. And since we already have the seeds from last year, it won't, be, it won't cost nothing to plant. So if we're going to spend any money, it will be on, hmm, cows and chickens. That's a great idea, Eunice. You know, we make $850 a year on every cow in that bar from the milk. Four twenty-five dollars every chicken, net profits. We got plenty of room for each one, too. Well, we got 30 cows, but we probably got room for 42. Uh, we got about 2,000 chickens. We probably fit about 5,000 that new bomber built two years ago. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that half of them by itself is at its own value. I wager our uh, herd's worth 35 grand, hence probably about $5,000 uh, if we were ever fixing them to sell them. Now, slow yourself in, John. You're talking crazy. All those animals crammed in there like that. Not to mention that all that extra livestock's gonna be expensive to buy. 1500 per cow and $3 per chicken, and each of those animals needs hours of care. Ought to be 10 hours a month for cows and five one hundredths of a person hour per month for chickens. You talk funny, you know. I'm a fit as a fiddle, John. But we gotta stop thinking about having one acre of corn for feeding each cow and five hundredths of an acre for each hen in the flock. Also, each of them cows is gonna need two acres of grazing space. It does sound like a lot to think about. Plus, we never know if any of them are gonna get sick, die, or fail to produce. You know, I read in the Farmer's Gazette that a herd of cattle depreciates 10% of their birth every year. <laughs> Chickens lose 25% every year. That's true. Now, I just don't know, you know, it seems we got to find a chance, though, buying some cows, selling the milk, getting some profits. What do you think? Um, and how much time do you think I'm going to have to work down the fields there, John? That's true. we got to work on the time, too. Well, I mean, during the winter and the spring, you know, you need the kids and grandpa fight for about 4,000 hours out. I reckon you're more like 4,500 in the summer and the fall. I remember, you know, Ray Kinsella, that guy down the road a piece. Telling me that he'd uh, pay the kids five dollars an hour in the cold seasons and five fifty in the warm season if they harvest for him. Mm -hmm. God bothers me though. You ever get the feeling he's hearing something ain't there? Huh, you better be nice. That man's a sweet tongue. On the ship, John and Eunice packed up their truck and rode out to the big city in search of Solutions LLC, a company specializing in management solutions. After hours of driving and many adventures, the Plowmans found themselves at the gates of at the gates of LP City. <laughs> After a run-in with a very irritable door guard, they found themselves at Solutions LLC and were led to the great and powerful Wizard of Ors. <laughs> <laughs> I have heard your dilemma, and 
it seems like you need someone to optimize your... <laughs> I'll have one of our chief scientists run the numbers. Scarecrow, you have a very large brain. Figure this out. Lion, come help with the sensitivity. <laughs> 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 well, our decision variables will assign, uh, will assign values to the number of acres designated for growing soybeans, corn, and wheat. Also, the number of cows and hens that you want to have total. Our constraints will be for the labor hours, funding for our new livestock, total acreage, space available on the barn and roost, and required acreage, your livestock need for food. We'll, of course, want to maximize the profit. I translated your situation into a mathematical model and ran it through a solver. To maximize your profit, plant 450 acres of soybeans, 30 acres of corn, and 100 acres of wheat. Save your $20,000 because that money is going to be more valuable in your pocket than grazing on your field. In the truth. After you finish your work at the end of the day, send those kids to work because your neighbor's a field of dreams isn't going to build itself. Do all these things and your enterprise will be worth $99,367 this time next year. But, 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 but Scarecrow, what if something changes? Uh, what if Ethan Long goes out of fashion and the soybean values drop? Uh, what if there's a wheat shortage and the value prices increase? Uh, uh, what then, Scarecrow? What then? I'm glad you asked, Lion. I took the liberty of calculating a range of crop values must stay within for each crop. Uh -huh. Our planting scheme will still be valid so long as the price don't fluctuate beyond. Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> <laughs> so as long as soybeans stay between 61.6 and infinity, and the corn value goes between negative infinity and 68.4, and the wheat value stays between negative infinity and 57.15, as you can see by the allowable increases and decreases. Wow. You spelled that right there. Right there on, on the slide. But, but what if there's a flood? What, what if there's a drought? What if you get early frost? Or any combination of these things, except maybe the flood and the drought. That's counterintuitive. <laughs> 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 oh, what? Well, I'm glad you asked. Care to help me explain? Oh, Here's a breakdown of how the values of each crop will change, <clears throat> given different kinds of inclement weather. Take a good look. We are going to have to re-optimize for each case. At this point, please turn to the second page and follow along. So you say you like optimization down on your home plantation, but fear excessive rain. <laughs> and early frost or oh, drought has you feeling full of doubt, so just sit back, I'll explain. We can re-optimize the system, but first we have to listen to how the prices change. With that tableau for each scenario, these things that seem to scare you will no longer cause you pain. And in the drought, we figured out the cows are what you need. You need more, more corn for feed. So buy more hens and change how you seed. In a flood, the livestock oh. In a flood, the livestock flooded. Cause why your profits blunted by soggy, thorny rain. They'll <laughs> help you out along with corn when the rain comes down a pouring on your dusty prairie plain. <laughs> Early frost may bring a small loss, our original solution holds. But 11K vanishes in the cold. That's not so bad, most of it's sold. And as for the accommodations, the re-optimizations are given on the board. And while, and while the song is very pretty, we are done with being gritty. And you'll think that it's a pity we can stay in LP City because this rhyme is getting... Whoa, Scarecrow! What got into you? You were going to rhyme a bad well, we, word. We were rhyming a <laughs> You rhymed it too many times. Well, then you end it. You end it. You got the brain. No, no, you end it. You don't like the way I was going to end it. Narrator. <laughs> While Scarecrow gave them a full analysis of the possible scenarios for inclement weather, since John and Nudis couldn't predict weather, after all, who could, they received a, um, they received a chart of all the expected profits they should prepare for one kind of inclement weather, only to have a completely different type of weather roll in. The solution found for the flood and early frost scenario seemed to be well-rounded. Optimal solution is to perform fairly well in all the scenarios except early frost. They returned from LP City only to find that Grandpa Plowman had been reading the Farmer's Almanac 
stretching back to 1902, and had developed a probability for each kind of weather condition. <laughs> <laughs> These are his findings. This alters the objective function as follows. Reoptimizing yielded the following solutions. So it, it basically find an expected value of the soybeans, corn, and wheat based on these probabilities. Okay. Reoptimizing yielded the following solutions of, of the shadow prices. Okay. Shortly after they returned, they, visit, they were visited upon by a representative of the local bank, J.P. Paper. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a script? That's a good question. Let me see that that contractor got. <laughs> so, in summary, you, the Plowman family, and Party B, as expressed on this year document, have been free screen, credit check, weighed, mass measured, and on the account of sterling wholesomeness of your Facebook profiles and online trail, have been pre-approved for a loan with a fixed interest rate. 10% for investment in your privately owned small bond that meant significant red blood of American business. Think of it with a small business loan from JP Paperstack and Associates. Your <laughs> business could really take off. This time next year, Plowman could be where they with Purdue and not just alphabetically. <laughs> Here are several indexes. If you sign an issue or look at any one of them for too long, we'll have a legally binding document, hence we'll be partners in the mutual success of our two endeavors. Well, what do you say, Patriot? I'm going to have to say no to you, sir. But we get most. Yeah, in, in our most in-depth projection for our budget for the following year, it's not worth it to spend the money we got. The shadow price for our investment option is zero, and this, if you don't like, if you don't understand that, you got no business hawking me alone. If you restructured our family farm entirely, that figure after remodeling was hmm, a dollar and ten cents. We got something to talk about, but you don't look like no farmer. I'm gonna have to show you to the door. Bum, bum, bum. So John and Eunice learned a valuable lesson from their trip to LP City. They invested their $20,000 in a low-risk CD, so that when they got older, they could travel the world, see the, uh, travel, see the world, and not have to sell the farm. Yeah. Well, the last question was, well, the idea is, you know, farmers can't control the weather, so they have to do a couple things, but whatever they can to really, like, plan ahead and try to figure out what they can do to make out best depending on whatever situation occurs. Some probability models help. Um, and we decided, they asked us at the end to suggest another model for a business where this might be the case. And so we picked a, a kind of niche retail market for all good nerds out there that play like card game, collectible card games or tabletop role playing games or video games, things like that. And so um, the idea is that these things all, they all come in booms and bursts and sometimes you might be moving a lot of uh, a new edition of some game handbook. Uh, other times you might be selling the cards more. Other times you might be wanting to wreck your space out more for uh, people to have tournaments or things in their store. Um, so that being this, the case, I mean, usually these businesses are very small too. You know, they don't get very big kind of niche market. So we're thinking maybe um, just the different demands and different timings of releases for different products might change or might be need to, can be, need to be considered. Uh, when you're figuring out how to stock, where to position things, and how to set up your workspace. And they can also have an online market or something like that that would add another element of complexity to their inventory in their model. Dun, dun.